Hey everybody, uh, Chris Lightford here. I'm the assistant editor at Psychotherapy Networker. Uh, welcome to Creativity Day. This is our first day at Symposium 2018. And I'm here with Joe Court. Joe is a uh, relationship and sex therapist. Joe, thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, it's great to be here. So tell me a little bit about yourself and your practice. So I have been in the field 33 years, and I've been um, a, primarily a psychotherapist working with trauma, sexual, out-of-control behaviors, and abuse. Mm -hmm. And then um, over time, I felt like I needed more training in sex therapy because people would get better, but I didn't have the other side of the sexual health model. Mm -hmm. So I became a sex therapist about 10 years ago, and I have a group practice in um, Royal Oak, Michigan, right outside Detroit, Michigan. Great. Great. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just jump right in. Uh, one of the questions we'd like to ask, as anybody knows who's read The Networker, we've uh, published stories, sometimes there's straight men who have sex with men. Um, what is the reason for that? And does that make them bisexual? No, okay, so um, straight men who have sex with men, in general, do it for the gay sex. It sounds strange, but they're not attracted necessarily to men, they're attracted to the sex with the men. So the sexual act, so there's all these different kinks and fetishes, or sometimes now there's something called mostly straight. So see, some of these guys, it's incidental, where they might meet, be in a situation with a guy, and they can be sexual with that guy, but it doesn't generalize to other guys. It's just that guy, or just that situation. Mm -hmm. Um, what makes it different from bisexuality is bisexual men are attracted to men in sex or relationship or both or one or the other, mm -hmm. and it does generalize to men and women. Mm -hmm. Where uh, a, just a straight guy, he's not attracted to guys. Mm -hmm. I always talk about the beach test. Um, so like I'm a gay guy on the beach, no offense to women, uh, the women are in the way. You know, when I'm looking at the men, I'm looking at their husbands, I'm looking at their adult sons. Straight guys, when you talk to them, they're having gay sex, they're not looking at the guys ever. They're on the beach looking at women. Mm -hmm. The men are in the way for them. Okay. Is, is this more common than, than we tend to think? It's underreported because it's so stigmatized. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, one time I had a guy at a dinner party. Everyone knows my work. And so he's like, Joe, if a guy has sex with another guy, he's gay. And I said, well, what happens when, you, when a woman has sex with another woman? And he said, uh, I call that college. You know, and I'm like, that's not fair that women get this like window and men get nothing. So men don't report. There's no community. There's no permission. So it's way more common than people think. Mm, great. Okay. Uh, a little while back, we actually put out an issue uh, called the mystery of gender. One of the questions we'd like to focus on um, actually deals with the issue of gender and gender identity. Joe, what is the difference between a sexual orientation and gender identity? So there's a great line, and I hope I remember it. I try to remember. I usually have a PowerPoint when I say it. Sexual identity is who I go to bed with. Gender identity is who I go to bed as. And most therapists get this all mixed up, and they, they ask me questions all day long. They're asking me gender questions when they're really sexuality questions. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. Gender identity is am I male, am I female, am I mm -hmm. both, am I neither. Mm -hmm. Sexual identity is... Who, to whom I'm attracted to. Hmm. Okay. Now, um, on the matter of sex addiction, um, whether or not it exists is kind of a controversial topic. Can you yes. Is it, is it real in your opinion? So yeah, uh, it is not real. It's not controversial to me. Um, it is to the public and it is amongst the therapist community. And uh, I was, for 25 years, sadly, a sex addiction therapist. I very much regret that. Mm -hmm. I feel I did a good enough job. People need to understand that when you're a sex addiction therapist, you get zero training on sex therapy. Zero. Mm -hmm. So the public and even therapists get confused. They think we're sex therapists. Sex addiction therapists are not. Uh, now they've been so pushed back lately that they're offering voluntary, voluntary 15 hours if you desire sex therapy treatment. Mm -hmm. So it's controversial because the science is so... Um, riddled with morality and religiosity and people's beliefs about what sex is or should be. The other day somebody said, a, a therapist, she was well-intended, she said, I just think it's when you're having too much sex. And I said, mm -hmm. well, who decides that? Do you decide that? Does your wife decide that? Does your husband decide? You know, mm -hmm. so it's so subjective. There are people with sexual suffering, people who have out of control sexual behavior, mm -hmm. and that's from a sex therapy position, more sex positive, and a sexual health model. Mm -hmm. The sex addiction model is more act-centered and very negative, okay. pathologizing what people do sexually. Okay, all right. I want to add for any of uh, you watching this uh, out there in Facebook land, um, this is a live, uh, live session with Joe Court. If you all have questions you would like to ask Joe, um, please feel free to type them into the comment section uh, below this video, and we'll run them by Joe. Um, Joe, before we wrap up, I want to ask you, um, what is the biggest mistake therapists make in working with the LGBTQ population? Um, 
It used to be that historically, the older generation, so my generation and up, would, would have uh, felt that you didn't have, you should be a blank slate and that you should just let the client speak and you just ask questions. And that's still wrong. It's, that's one of the, we used to be the biggest. Today, the biggest is they think they know everything. And no offense to therapists. When I was a therapist in the 90s, nobody wanted to be affiliated with LGBT, not at all. Mm -hmm. Now, since 2000, with Psychology Today, everybody clicks, I'm an LGBT therapist, and they're not. They think they know, and they're at my talks usually more for the transgender issue, and I'm happy to teach that. But by the time they're done with my talks, they recognize how little they really knew about LGB. Um, there's many nuances and many ways. It's, people just have a heteronormative, monogonormative, heterosexist way of thinking. And, and there's so many straight people these days that say, I don't even want to think that way about my own life, let alone LGB. So that's the biggest uh, uh, thing that they don't know. Okay, great. Now, what advice would you have for the younger therapists out there, the ones who are just starting, maybe they're in grad school, um, and they're interested in getting into a similar line of work mm. as you're in? What, oh, my God, I so that? would love that. Um, uh, my hope would be that you would be interested in sex therapy. The younger generation, the millennials, are so sexually curious, erotically curious, and um, there's a, a, a whole, if you want to be a therapist, this is a pioneering field. We're still, even though it's been around for a long time, very few therapists have done this. And here's your chance to get involved and bring your thinking and your open minds and your, it's just, I would love to see more young people as sex therapists. Great, great. Joe Cord, thank you so much. Yeah, really thank you. It. Thanks for having me. Sure.